Hey everybody, it's Josh Ellsworth and joining you live broadcasting on Facebook and YouTube. And today is Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. And so I'm on schedule this week to come to you today, of course, and then also Thursday at the same time to share with you uh, just some projects and just some how-to knowledge to be able to decorate items with transfers or heat transfer vinyl. And so for today's project, we're going to decorate a jacket with a couple scraps of our Ultra Weed uh, heat transfer vinyl, which is our latest CAD cut material that we've released out uh, to the market. And so I've been cutting and decorating a lot of different things with Ultra Weed and had some pieces left over. So I grabbed these two colors, uh, grabbed this uh, camo jacket, which is 100% polyester jacket. Uh, the brand is Independent Trading and it is sold on SNS Activewear. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that uh, project. So feel free to shout out exactly who you are and where you're watching from. We'll be on together for, I don't know, probably around 20 or 30 minutes today. I want to show you everything from getting this from our CADWorks Live design software over to my GraphTech cutter. Talk to you a little bit about uh, GraphTech cutters from stalls and where we're headed with those, what's happening. Um, show you what this costs to make uh, from a cost calculation standpoint with our heat transfer vinyl cost calculator and then some application techniques and uh, specifically talking about um, decorating items that have waterproof uh, coatings and some decisions that you have to make when you uh, go to decorate these items. So uh, see we have um, folks watching from everywhere from Dallas, Texas to sunny California to Washington and Denver, uh, North Denver, North Carolina. Um, and so it's good to have you all on this morning uh, for our session. And so without further ado, uh, let's talk a little bit about the material that we'll be uh, using today. And for that, I'm going to go to that product page on the screen. And this is Ultra Weed. Uh, we launched this product on May 1st. So it is a brand new heat transfer vinyl product from Stalls. Uh, I like it for a lot of reasons, of course, because it's very easy to work with. Uh, we say it's your new go-to material uh, because it balances the best of uh, two products that are super popular for us. That's Premium Plus and Fashion Film. So if you're familiar with either of those, uh, this has a little bit of both of those into the formula in that it works as easy at the heat press as Fashion Film. Uh, with a hot peel application. Uh, this has a low temp application. We're gonna use 260 degrees today on this 100% polyester jacket and it layers nicely. Uh, but it's also beneficial like Premium Plus with the low temp, but also with a little bit of stretch to it. And so um, this is made in the USA. We've been seeing uh, sales not only go extremely well for this product, but reorders go well, which means the people that are buying it and trying it are liking the product and they're placing uh, reorders. So Ultra Weed right now is available in about 30 colors and we're excited that we'll be adding three new colors in the month of June uh, to the range. That will be uh, a gold color, which is an athletic gold, a darker shade of navy. We already have a light navy in the range and then we'll also be adding a royal blue uh, in the month of June and then we'll have new colors in July, August, September, all the way down through. So this is a product range we're building out after we get market feedback and you guys are going to love it if you haven't uh, tried it yet. So that'll be the product that we're using today. You can find it under the CAD Cut Direct section on stalls.com, heat transfer vinyl, and then right down here in the bottom right-hand corner, sorted alphabetically is Ultra Weed. So real easy to, to find right there. Um, we'll also be decorating this jacket. So this jacket is from SNS Activewear. Um, it is a water resistant uh, windbreaker. And so it's great for um, cooler nights uh, throughout the summer or as we transition uh, from summer and start thinking about the fall season. I know that's tough to believe because summer's not even uh, technically started or here yet. And so we think about uh, decorating for fall already. That's the, the way we need to be on top of our business with planning um, as we move out of the summer into the fall season from merchandising. Um, so this is available in a lot of colors. We will be decorating the camo style uh, today uh, together. And then we will be designing in CADWorks Live. And here is the design that we will be uh, cutting from our scrap heat transfer vinyl. We're going to go ahead and uh, do white, I think, is our main color. Um, so let me go ahead and change the uh, colors here. So I'm just going to make that yellow so it's easier to see on the background. And we're actually going to do the, uh, the dancer 
and the uh, line underneath in green. And I'll give you some tips about uh, creating and cutting this. So first thing I want to do today, normally I would size the design and then uh, send it to my cutter if I were doing a, a big job. But since I'm just going to be cutting from scrap material today and I'm going to be doing one jacket, uh, before I start to do sizing, I want to be able to load uh, one of these scrap materials into the vinyl cutter, have the vinyl cutter tell me the exact usable space on the scrap material, and then I'll size my design to make sure I can accommodate it with the material scraps that I have and cut. So if you don't save your scraps of vinyl, you are throwing away money. Um, all you need to do is be able to sort these. I recommend a sort of file folder system where you sort them by color because that's typically your number one decision making. Customer needs a, a white design or a green design or a yellow design. Go to the folder with that color. And if you do your cost calculation right, these should be free. You should be bearing this cost into a job that you've already completed, that um, you've cut good graphics and then you just had scraps left over. Um, I still like to associate a cost to them, but usually I try to bury the, the waste into the job that I've already produced. And these just become free materials where I can do a one-off shirt, jacket, whatever it is very easily. So let's move you over to the Graph Tech Cutter. Take a look. This is the standard CE6000 uh, Graph Tech Vinyl Cutter. It's a 24 inch cutter. Let's start with the um, start with the green material. And I'm just going to, to be able to load this in, all I'm going to do is adjust these pinch rollers. So these pinch rollers, uh, can be adjusted side to side as long as they're in the open position. And then you can load your piece of material in and then just lock down the lever. And now instead of telling it I have a roll, I'm going to tell it I have a sheet. And so I press option number three, then the machine will measure the width of the sheet and it will also measure the length. And so I'll see that's a eight by 3.3 inch sheet. And so that is the available space that I have. So let's take a look back over at the graphic here. And let's look at my size. So 3.3 by 8. So when I select this in CAD works, that's telling me my width is 6 and my height is 3.27, which is really um, squeezing uh, the distance, uh, the dimensions rather of this. So I'm going to go ahead and just size this down slightly. And let's make it five and a half inches wide and see what that does to the height proportionally. That brings it down to three inches overall. So that should be well within my scrap material. And uh, yeah, so Julian just says, uh, timely topic here. I just did uh, 17 jackets with scraps yesterday. Boom. So we're, we're following you today, Julian. Um, so this is ready to go. So once I have it um, sized, what I usually like to do is break it apart by color. And I've already done that, but in case it's always one object, you can just go to shaping and break it apart by color. And that will allow you to kind of move out the design and look at each piece individually. So this green piece is um, 5.05 by 2.98. And so that'll be fine. Now, if I had a smaller piece of scrap where I couldn't fit this uh, full design, what I would do is there's a lot of waste in between that dancer and that horizontal line. And so um, I can probably fit two of these if I had two jackets to do across the scrap that I have loaded. So let me just show you how I would do that if the scrap were a little smaller. Um, I would manually place it. I would be willing to do that work so I don't waste all this material in between the design since it's only two design elements that need place. So what I would do is I would break it apart by regions i would selected the green layer, broke it apart by regions, and then that would give me this piece that I can move closer to be able to save on the material. And I'm going to rotate it. Uh, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to manually trim that and place it anyways. Now, all of a sudden, you'll see that that piece only takes up three by one and a half. And if you remember, my width of my material was about eight inches um, by three inches tall, so I could fit two, four, I could fit four of those now on that scrap material. So think about that when you're looking at a design, looking at the available space. If it's a simple placement, of course, I would never break apart um, individual letters and, and manually place those to get to what I need to. But when you're looking at very simple elements, to be able to place those manually isn't a big deal. And so what I'll do is I'll make copies of this over in our cutting software. 
I know I'm not gonna be able to fit more than one of this across the white material that I have. So I'm not even gonna mess with that right now. So let me group my green layer back together before I make copies of it. Cause once it goes over, I want it to be uh, grouped. So that is the condensed feature. And then CADWorks Live is an online design software. It's free to you. I'm gonna hit file, send a vector cut, and that's going to download that. Um, it'll ask me if I want to open it, click yes. It'll download it to the bottom of my toolbar in Chrome, if that's the web browser you're using. And now I'm opening it up in VectorCut on my local computer so I can move it over and be able to show you uh, what that looks like. So uh, VectorCut, I'm still running VectorCut 2.2, which I happen to like. There's a couple free downloads to uh, VectorCut that are out there um, on the CADWorks site. 3.0, I think, is our latest version. I like the 2.2. So once I have this over, I'm going to mirror everything. Again, I have my green material loaded, so I'll select my green material. And then I usually like to set up the sheet size to be the material size that I had loaded, and that's the usable space. So again, the usable space was 8.3 by 3.3. So my width is going to be 8.3. And my height or length is 3.3. And then I can get a nice visual representation of what's happening here. At that point, I'm gonna move my design down onto my material. Let me zoom in so I can see it across the room here. And you can see it fits perfectly on there. So you can make your duplicate copies here if you wanna cut multiples across. I'm just gonna hit Control C, Control V and manually place them. And then um, by selecting everything, you'll just be able to keep making copies and then you can put them wherever you want. And you can see I can fit four of those across the scrap vinyl. Once I'm good with it, I'm gonna just click send to cutter, but let me bring you close to the cutter so you can see this cut here. Give you a look there and then over the only thing i'm going to click here is send cut job i'm connected with the usb cable i know i was cutting ultra weed last time on the cutter so i'm not too concerned about uh, doing a test cut or anything that's the last product i've cut and because i told the machine to measure the sheet before i started i'm never going to get an error that it's out of material when you when you load scrap materials into these roll style cutters you really have to be careful that um, you don't set them up for a roll because then what happens is if that roll or that small piece that you've set up as a roll uh, extends past the back sheet sensor, it's going to say out of material and you're going to lose uh, all that material from your cut job. So when you're loading scrap pieces, always set it up um, to be able to cut the sheet. For those of you with uh, craft desktop based cutters like a Silhouette or a Cricut, you know, we put this on the cutting mat and those are designed to cut sheets of material. That's how they were originally built. So you really have no issues, but those with roll style cutters, um, cutting scraps sometimes can be a challenge unless you know the proper technique. So I've been able to cut four of those across the ultra weed material. And so we'll weed that here in a second, but I'm going to load my white uh, scrap piece of material into the cutter load it, tell it to, we have a sheet loaded. Again, it'll measure the width and the length so I can make sure I'm gonna be able to fit my design. And this one is, yeah, 4.4 by 8.35. So let me go back to my software here and I will take some of your questions just here in a moment and select my white material. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring it down to the corner of the design, using the material using the auto origin and then be able to click uh, send a cutter. And it will, uh, it's just gonna cut that uh, design. Nothing much to see there. So as it finishes the cutting, I'll bring you down here and we can weed this design together. So ultra weed, uh, heat transfer vinyl, uh, very easy to weed. That's why we call it ultra weed. We say it's the easiest weeding experience that's out there. I'm just going to grab the corner of my material and remove it, uh, the excess away. It's a nice balance of being a sticky back material, but also being uh, easy to peel. So you don't have the resistance and the curling and the breaking 
that sometimes you get with other products um, that are out there, including fashion film even, has a little bit more uh, resistance or stickier back than this, but this is sticky enough to allow you to do the detail without slowing you down on weeding large area. It peels real nice uh, without as much breaking. And so um, I'm only gonna need one of these, but I'll clean them all up real quick. So I'm just gonna go inside of the uh, design here and pick out any of the pieces I don't want. And I can see there's a little piece under the chin of the dancer here that needs to come out. And then once everything's been removed, I could save these scraps, but this is probably just too small. I don't get into saving that fine of uh, scraps because then it just becomes more work than it's worth uh, to be able to do. And we can see we are e easily able to fit four of those here. So if we had a roll of white or extra material of white, now I can be able to decorate four jackets and accommodate the green layer just with that scrap piece. So I don't know about you, but I've been down to that last little piece of a, a roll of glitter even where I've had to take a design and literally break it up just to fit one more because I didn't want to order another roll or the job was due. And so be creative with how you break up your design and you can just trim it apart to make it easy uh, to position at the press. So those are two separate elements. Another thing I like about Ultra Weed is that you can stack it. And so it's very easy to separate at the press without worrying about the design uh, messing up. So I'm just gonna position that over here for now. Grab my white material that's been cut. And I probably could have fit a couple of these up if I would have rotated it. But I'll just trim this one out. I will save this scrap material for a later date. Um, of course, it doesn't do me much good in an L shape, so I usually like to store it in rectangles or squares. And then we will weed the white part of the design. So this material, the cost is, uh, it's really cost effective. We've priced it uh, almost identical to the fashion film product, which is just over a penny, a square inch, when you do the math on what it costs to make something. However, that square inch cost isn't the whole picture because it doesn't include what I'm doing right now, which is my labor cost for weeding or for heat applying or even for loading my vinyl cutter. Um, and it doesn't include the fact that I am operating um, in a certain percentage of my house or maybe a building I have to pay rent on with certain electrical bills uh, to keep the lights on and keep the heat press running and certain expenses to sell the product. So don't forget when you're calculating your costs about labor and about overhead. And so we have a cost calculator that, that helps you to not forget that. But I'm going to decorate the jacket first before we get into all those details. So that's weeded and ready to go. Let me take a look at some questions before I go uh, over to the heat press. So, hey, Dario, good to see you from Columbia. Great to, great to see you this morning. Uh, Julian asked, is this good for high detail? It absolutely is. Uh, you can do uh, really good detail uh, with the Ultra Weed if you have your cut settings correct. Something I've noticed, uh, the people that have had a poor experience with Ultra Weed, which has just been a handful out of the hundreds and hundreds of customers that have tried it, um, usually they have the cutting settings inaccurate. They have their blade out too far or they have too much downforce. And so this is a super thin material that allows you to do fine details. So if you're getting any issues with jamming on your cutter, uh, it is you. <laughs> you need to make sure you reduce the downforce and reduce the blade depth um, and that fixes the issue. Um, so we do uh, the 15 inch wide rolls are what this is available in currently. Um, Let's see. So I'll give you a little tease. When are you guys going to do some work with the brick vinyl, something cool with thickness uh, from Xander's? So uh, we do have our silicone material 200 that sometimes we do stuff with. It's a thicker rubbery uh, texture material. Um, and then uh, stay tuned. Within a couple months, we'll have um, some cool new stuff coming out for you um, in the vinyl game that I think you'll like that's similar uh, to what you're talking about. Uh, we will give links to the cost calculator here in a second when I demo it. 
And let's see. Oh, Xanders is watching from uh, Nicaragua. So thanks for joining us from Nicaragua. That's awesome. All right. So here we go. I think that's all the questions for now. So let's head over to our heat press and talk about how to decorate this jacket. All right, so I'm working on the Hotronics Auto Clam Heat Press. Um, one of my favorite styles of heat presses between this and the Fusion. Uh, I like the Auto Clam because it fits nicely in my bedroom, fits up against the wall, and it's a single step operation where I just have to lock it down and it automatically opens for me. Now, when you're decorating an item like a jacket, there is a lot of zippers and seam structure that you have to contend with. This is a pretty basic left chest logo like what I'm wearing on my polo shirt. And so there are really two to three ways you can do a, a left chest logo accurately. One, and the preferred way is you change the platen. These attachments on this machine are fully interchangeable, which means I can unlock a lever here and just swap it out for the appropriate size platen. That's the most efficient way if you're doing uh, volume. Um, also, you'll notice I have my heat press on a caddy, which is a stand that gives me a cantilever design. And so that's really important because that's going to allow me to split my item and to be able to thread it on to get to the uh, print area. So when I thread it, I'm getting rid of any seams or any uh, linings or anything that might be on the back of the jacket and just getting down to the front of the jacket, which is a good step in the right direction. Uh, today, for those of you that may not have um, the ability to change the platen, I'm gonna show you how to use the Print Perfect pad. And so you can use a Print Perfect pad or you can use, let's see, I got one here, the heat printing pillow. Either of these would work for the application. The only difference between these is the Print Perfect pad has a firmer density. And so when you're pressing things like screen printed transfers that require a firm pressure, you always wanna use the Print Perfect pad, not the pillow, you're not gonna be able to get the pressure. Since this is a heat transfer vinyl, I could use either, it uh, doesn't really matter. So I don't use the Print Perfect pad often, so we're gonna use that today. Uh, all I'm gonna do is, uh, I, I do like inserting this because it raises the print area. So all I'm gonna do is slightly unzip uh, the neckline enough to get my hand in there to insert the pad. And then I put it underneath the jacket and zip the jacket back up. And so now I have this raised area um, with the zipper falling below. And actually I have a portrait. I'm gonna rotate it landscape to go more with the design that I'm doing. So the one cool thing about using the Print Perfect pad with threading your heat press, a lot of people like this more than just using the six by 10 attachment, the platen, because now I can see more of the jacket. And how that helps me is with actually lining up my design to make sure it's straight. There's, it's helpful to have some context of the whole jacket. Now, anytime you do add thickness uh, inside of the jacket or the press, uh, we have to adjust our pressure. So this has an over center pressure adjustment, which is great. It's one of our patented features on Hotronics. So you get pressure from the center out, not in the back of the machine, which causes a pinching effect. Um, that back pressure adjustment would really be an issue because I'm applying up at the front of the press here. So this is nice because it applies from the center out. I'm just going to adjust it to raise my top heater. And now when I lock it down, that's at a six. I'm looking for more of like a four on this one. So there is a digital pressure readout that I'm keeping my eye on right on the control board. And so there it is at a four. So the reason I want it at a four is because that's a nice medium pressure, um, the lower side of a medium, because I'm only applying to this small area rather than my whole 16 by 20 surface. So with that in mind, I'm ready to press. But before I do that, I wanna talk about uh, pressing waterproof items. And so the guidance here, and I'm not gonna do it today because I don't have the right tools, but um, if you wanna figure out if something's waterproof and you don't have the item descriptions, it's really simple, take some water, and flick it on the item. And if the water balls up, then you know you're dealing with a waterproof coating. And so here I have little uh, balls or um, uh, dots, droplets of water that clearly aren't penetrating the jacket. And so I know that there's a waterproof coating and I can just wipe that water off of the surface. So in order, you can heat apply on top of the waterproof coating, but all bets are off for item durability. If you're not worried about item durability because it's a umbrella, for instance, it's not going to be laundered, 
then I would probably go ahead and just press on top of the waterproof coating without worrying about um, anything because that's not going to be put through a washer and a dryer. On an item like a, a windbreaker, it's probably not going to be washed more than five or 10 times. Um, so we do have a lot of customers that will test one uh, with our product, like an ultra weed, wash it five or 10 times. And if it's durable, then they'll know that combination works. And, and basically that gives them an advantage of everybody else who doesn't know if that combination works with selling a high-end item like a jacket. But if you wanna be safe, you can pick up a denatured alcohol, which is rough stuff. So you wanna make sure you have proper ventilation in the room, uh, that you're wearing gloves and potentially a face mask. We all know what those are now, unfortunately. And you wanna wipe off uh, the surface to remove the coating from the area that you're gonna apply. In this case, the entire area that would be underneath this uh, print pad where my graphic is gonna go. So that removes the coating. Uh, you'll wanna make sure that um, it doesn't discolor the jacket. So it's still some testing that needs to happen for you, but it gives you a nice surface where you can get a good bond uh, to remove the coating. You really can't um, have confidence in um, like nail polish remover and some of those things. I've heard some stories of customers using those, uh, but test it. Try to remove the coating with the, with the alcohol or with the nail polish remover. Um, acetone also works, again, really nasty stuff, um, like an acetate solvent, um, and then flick, flick water back on it to see if it balls up or see if it um, actually absorbs into the jacket, and that should give you your answer. So a little bit of testing. Um, in this case, we're gonna keep it simple, and I'm just going to apply on this jacket, and then I'm actually going to launder it to see if it works for you. It may not work, I don't know. Um, but we're going to uh, try it here, so everybody will know here in about you know, probably by Thursday when I can wash this five times. So I'm gonna position the larger part of my design down first, regardless of whether you're going on a waterproof uh, jacket or any item, Ultra Weed is really awesome because you can see clear through the liner uh, to be able to layer it. And it also has something called a two second fast tack, which means I'm just gonna lock this down for two seconds, be able to open the heat press, and then I can hot peel the carrier. Really nice. It gets my background to stay without shrinking so I can line up the next layer. And remember, I'm at 260 degrees. So that's one of the benefits of UltraWeed. It leaves you a lot less prone to scorching or damaging uh, the performance polo like I'm wearing or the jacket or whatever it is that you might be decorating. We've done faux leather purses and clutches. Uh, so all sorts of opportunities there. Now, I'm gonna take my green layer of my design. Again, it's in two pieces and I'm not too worried about it. I'm just going to uh, position that onto uh, my press. Make sure I get it in the right location. Two steps, gonna do the line and then I need to slide my jacket to make sure I'm getting good pressure on all parts of the design. I had a little off center and that's looking good. And because some element of the white is exposed to the top heater, I'm gonna use a cover sheet. I can press it now for the full 12 seconds, but I'm only gonna do a few seconds uh, to get that backing off of the green material. Oh, looks like I did not get enough pressure there. So let me cover it. And anytime you're peeling something, and I was up at the very like top corner of the design, it's not getting pressure on this outer edge. Um, so what I'm going to do there is just make sure I move it to an area that's getting pressure and you can just stop and reheat it if you have an issue. Let me give this another quarter turn because I'm really up against the edge of that print perfect pad. So I wanna give it a, a few more uh, digits of pressure on my control board. I'm just gonna press it. And now after it's been pressed, I'll come back and peel it again, yeah, there we go. And so the reason I'm only tacking it for that, in this case, three seconds, is because this carrier that was overlapping some of the white can leave an indent. And so just by tacking it twice, that gets me everything onto the jacket, at least temporarily holding and gets the carrier out of the way. And so now I can cover the whole thing and I can give it the full application at 260 degrees for 12 seconds. Um, Craig asked, can you sublimate over a waterproof coating? I'd probably say no. Um, I haven't tried it personally, but unless it's a polymer coating, it's really going to block you from getting to the polyester part of the fabric. And also I think those high heats may be troubling uh, for items that would have a waterproof coating uh, on them as well. So you gotta be careful there. 
So this is complete. I want to show you the finished result, which looks awesome. See if I can hold it up straight. You can see I have my design really clean on the camo. I was able to break apart that green and save on the material to be able to do an application. Um, and if this launders well, um, I love the way it looks. So I'm only going to put it through five cycles. I'm not worried about this lasting 50 cycles. I'm just going to put an expected use and durability on the jacket uh, when I sell it. But again, I was able to do this just out of scrap vinyl very quickly and very easily out of ultra weed and the vinyl cutter. So let me look at some questions before I talk about cost calculation. So thanks. We've shared some links to the uh, print perfect pads. You can look those up. Uh, yeah, the heat transfer vinyl uh, that we use, the ultra weed is, is very thin. It's very soft on the garment. Um, let's see. Yeah, and then uh, Sharp Blade does help. And we sell software uh, for your cutter. We actually give it away, Francie, um, at cadworkslive.com. You can get access to our free online designer, which we've been adding lots of artwork to, uh, and be able to also download a vinyl cutter driver uh, to be able to um, to be able to send to the graph tech, the Roland, whatever cutter it is uh, that you have, it'll drive a lot of them. So, and then Todd said, looks great. Yeah, I think it's a uh, sharp, nice color combo here. And I know Todd, uh, uh, I messaged him, but he shared this picture of cutting ultra weed uh, and then compared, uh, I think it was a scripture verse, Philippians, um, really fine text against like a penny or a dime. I forget which coin it was. And just the level of detail you can achieve if you have, um, a sharp blade is great. And then Craig says, can you do ultra weed on the 360? So for those of you that don't know what the 360 is, this is our new hat press that's out. Uh, mine's down at the studio for photos um, and more videos, but it'll be coming back to my house shortly. Um, yes, you can do ultra weed. You can do heat transfer vinyl work on that hat press. Um, I'm gonna spend some time to dial in the application settings for those products, but should be a great product to use on that press, honestly. All right, so here we go. Let's go to the cost calculator portion. So let me get rid of CADWorks for a second and pull up my Excel grid and I'm gonna bring this full view so we can see what we're working with here. Um, so this is our heat transfer vinyl cost calculator. And the reason I wanted to pull this up is if you haven't looked at this in a while, we have updated it now to include CAD cut ultra weed. It's the second item here on the right hand side. And so it works for calculating costs with ultra weed as well. And so the idea of this is that you can download it and we can share the link to our website where you can fill out your information and download it. You can enter your shop's overhead so we don't forget about that. And you can enter the average uh, rate that you're paying to your heat press and your weeding employees so you don't miss the labor part. Um, after that, um, you save it and that's your shop info. It stays kind of there and you can start to enter the specific job info uh, to calculate the cost. And so on this particular job, it says total number of cut designs per garment. And so that was this garment. Um, we have two colors, a single print location. So that would be two uh, total cut designs, the white and then the greenery color that we're working with here. So I'm gonna enter a two there. And there's little helpers here that'll walk you through and explain it uh, for you as well. Then it's gonna say, how long did it take for you to weed uh, each cut design? And I think a minute is more than enough because the white one probably took me a minute and the green one probably took me 10 seconds for how simple that was. So I'm just gonna put a, a minute on average to be safe. How long did it take me to heat press each layer? I probably did the whole jacket in about two minutes. Um, so I'm going to leave that at, at one minute as well, but you can always make it a minute and a half for each layer, whatever you want it to be. Okay, so that changes all of your labor calculations that are happening over here on the right hand side. Um, I checked with Jenna who ordered this jacket and for a single piece, this jacket was costing us $13.99 from SNS Activewear. And then the total number of garments sold for this job. So if I'm only doing one, I'm going to go ahead and enter one uh, jacket there. So it'll tell me, you know, here's my, how much time it's gonna take me to do that. Just let me make this, let's say we're doing 25 jackets. So we can see it would take me uh, 1.67 hours. So about an hour and 45 minutes 
uh, to be able to produce this job if there were 25 pieces based on my factors. At that point, we're gonna do the dimensions and placement one, which was my white layer. Um, let's say that was about uh, six inches wide by three inches high. Placement number two, which was my green layer. Now with the way I broke it down, I was able to save some material. If you remember, it was about uh, one and a half inches wide by three inches high. And so it will tell you how much material you need um, to be able to do these 25 jackets of each color uh, for each placement. And then over to the uh, right, it's gonna calculate the cost. So if I look over at UltraWeed, let me zoom in for you a little bit here. So it's going to tell me that my material cost for that small design is gonna be about 30 cents in UltraWeed. It's gonna tell me my labor cost is 44 cents for heat pressing and 45 cents for weeding. It's gonna tell me my overhead is 228. And again, overhead is so high on this because it's calculating as a percent of my total cost. So it's taking, it's factoring in that jacket costing me $14 plus 30 cents in material. And it's applying 15% of those costs to make sure I cover my overhead, my sales, marketing expenses, anything else um, that would be in my overhead bucket. And my garment cost is $13.99. So it's gonna tell me that cost me $17.45 to be able to decorate one jacket or 25 of them for $436. So just to talk real briefly, I love high-end items like jackets. Um, one of my favorite things to decorate because um, basically you've spent the time to fight through the testing and to learn how to do it and to master something that a lot of folks are intimidated by. And so when you take that time uh, to fight through that, basically you end up on the other side being a much smaller percentage of decorators that are willing to take on this job, which means there's less competition and you can typically command a higher price. And so jackets take about the same amount of time outside of a little prep work as it takes to decorate a t-shirt uh, with a heat press and there's a lot more margin opportunity. I mean, think about it. When you decorate a t-shirt with this design, if it were left chest, it's probably gonna cost you about $5 to make. You're, you're probably gonna sell that t-shirt for 10 to $15, depending on the quantity in your markets. So you're gonna make about five or 10 bucks in profit back to the business after you pay yourself for the t-shirt. Now, when I look at this jacket and I look at the price of $17.45 to make this item, I really believe at a quantity of whether it's one or whether it's 25, that you can be charging a lot more for this jacket. You can probably get 35 to $45 for this jacket, which is going to yield a minimum of $17 in profit per item. And so think about it, it takes about the same amount of time. You're going to at least double the profit that you're making per hour at your heat press. That's why it's such a benefit to spend the time to get higher end items, whether it's performance wear, whether it's jackets, even backpacks, some of these items that are higher ticket items, and you're gonna be able to drive your profitability way up. And so that's my suggestion to you as you think through this is don't look at it and don't say, wow, I gotta figure out what alcohol to remove the coating, right? Do that once. You saw from independent uh, trading from SNS Active where let's look at that again. We see here, once I master one, Look at all the colors that this is available in. So I've spent the time to go ahead and master an item on how to do it that's available in a wide range of selection. What does that tell me? That means I'm going to be able to go out and I'm gonna be able to sell this item to a lot of different uh, teams, organizations, uh, small businesses, et cetera, a lot of uh, clients, uh, consumers even, that are going to want to engage this item because it looks awesome once it's completed. So spend the work. Um, and figure this, uh, figure out how to do those high-end items. Uh, some questions coming in. I am born to be the man, I like that name. If you are doing a multicolor design, is it possible to tack the first color on all your shirts, then go back with the second color, or will this affect the adhesive? It is possible, but I'm not sure you would wanna do that. Um, the only way I would do that is if it were a cold peel and I had to remove my item from the press. Um, and the reason I say that, I think it will cost you more in labor on a hot peel uh, to remove the item from the press when you can just tack it, peel it, and then place your second item. So there'd have to be a pretty compelling reason for 
for me to want to do that, but it will certainly work because keep in mind, if I tack something today for two seconds, and it's just temporarily holding on my shirt. I can leave that shirt sit for a year. Um, as long as before it's laundered, it gets the full application time to reach the melting point of the adhesive and make a bond uh, with the garment. Let's take a couple more questions before we conclude today. Um, yeah, we shared the link for the cost calculator. This is um, this is the link. I'm just going to share it on the screen in case it didn't get uh, shared where you're watching it. But just stalls.com slash vinyl dash price dash calculator. So I'll leave that up so you guys can jot it down. And then also, hopefully you have that. I'm going to share the link for the free online design software, uh, CAD Works Live, that I was using uh, today. All right, and then another question came in from Todd. How is UltraWeed with blocking dye migration on camo or poly in general? So um, UltraWeed does not have a dye blocker and it is not thick. So while it is opaque, which means I can decorate polyesters and cottons that aren't prone to bleed, that aren't sublimated, uh, for instance, or are stable dye, um, like for instance, um, Sanmar makes a standard sport tech garment, um, but then they also make a posi charge version of their performance line. The posi charge version costs you a little bit more, but it's made with a special polyester that won't bleed through your design. That means my white design is going to stay white and it's not going to let the red from the shirt bleed through it. However, to answer your question, Todd, if you have a garment that is going to bleed, that's a nasty polyester, um, UltraWeed's not going to block that, those dyes um, at all. So you, want, you do want to be careful with that. Now, you can mask it by applying it 260. Um, the dyes aren't going to activate and bleed at 260, but I always say that's just putting a Band-Aid on the issue. When you send the garment out the door and then the kid leaves it in the hot car or mom throws it in the dryer on a high heat, um, then it's going to bleed and then you have a return and, and a lot of waste in the process and an unhappy customer. So I wouldn't, I'd make sure I test your garments that, that are prone to bleed and use ultra weed only on those that aren't sublimated or prone to bleed. Uh, we do have products that will block dye migration. Uh, silicone dye block is one of those that we sell. Thermal film is another one that does well because it's thicker. Um, and we have some printable products that work on like a roll in Versacam or any solvent or latex printer that have dye blockers. Um, all right, I think we're getting pretty close to all the questions. So I don't want to drag us on too long. We're, we're right tight at 45 minutes here. Um, I'll be coming back to you guys Thursday. If you have types of content that you'd like to see or learn, uh, feel free to spend these last minute or two and type those in. Um, I'd love to let you guide the content with what we're producing. I come up with an idea and we share it based on what I think uh, you want to know. But if you have ideas or things you would like to know and learn about heat pressing, uh, Jenna and myself will be doing these live broadcasts throughout the month of June on Mondays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. Eastern. So I want to thank you all for attending. Wish you a great uh, week, and I'll see you guys again on Thursday.